I'm going to show how to take rough sawn stock and plane it down with a router to get some nice flat pieces. And this is for guitar bodies. So I went to the wood supply and I got, actually they were nice enough to cut it for me, um, eight quarters poplar and it was like $60 to get uh, two 10 foot pieces and then they cut them for me. And what I'm doing with this is uh, I'm building guitar bodies. So I need two of these glued together to make a guitar body. So how does this jig work? Well, I know that this is a little bit bigger than what I want. I want about one and three quarter inch thick material. And this comes in at over two inches. It's probably two and an eighth. And um, so what I did was I took a piece of uh, plywood and some straight pine pieces and I glued and uh, uh, attached these with brads to make these my height rails and these are just a little taller than the raw stock. Then I have my router and I have attached it to this piece of MDF and the MDF is long enough such that if I go all the way to the end of this rail over here that I still have material there and vice versa. Uh, the bit that I have here is a one inch uh, double flute straight cut bit. And so it's uh, there's lots of different names for that. It's like all sorts of things. So a mortising bit or a dado bit or a clearing, bottom clearing bit, or something like that. So that you can find them everywhere. Being one and a half inches, I'm slowing my, my bit speed down. So I've got, I don't know that I need to, but I am. Uh, but what I did is I screwed the base to this and I start out by adjusting the height here and Right now the bit will barely touch and so I'm going to do some passes here And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up here at the top left and I'm going to come straight down Coming straight down allows me to see my previous uh, Milling work and I'll be able to see the groove pretty easily then I'm going to go from there and go in blocks of maybe a sixteenth or at most an eighth, make this completely flat. And I've attached this, by the way, with just a bead of hot melt glue here and on the back side over here. So there's hot melt glue there as well. So here, well, you can see me. Here you can see how I've uh, already planed this side and this is a corner, I'm not too worried about that, even though I didn't plane it fully. But uh, you can see, I can move this up and I go back, down, to actually plane that out. And then I move to the side and go back up, because I, uh, I don't want the bit to climb here. I want it to, I want it to do exactly this direction. So, um, makes it easier, chips fly away. So I'm going to finish this piece. Then I'll show you flipping it over. So you can see this is the first surface planed. What I'm going to do, since this was a little wobbly, I'm going to take the glue off, flip it over. It should be completely flat. Apply the glue. And then uh, one key note, I did not change the height of this. So this stays from when I finish this piece as is. I pick up the router. I just set it aside. And I set it so that the bit has, there's a little cavity that on this toolbox that it can sit into, just happenstance. And um, when I flip this over, the bit should be at the absolute surface on the other side of this wood. So let's try that. So how do you release this board from the surface? Well, I have a little chisel and a tiny hammer. I hammer it in and uh, use a razor knife to kind of cut this a bit, pull it up. This leaves a little bit of a nasty edge on the wood and on the board surface, so and that's stuck pretty good there. Uh, let me tell you, if I knew how good hot glue stuck stuff together for woodworking, I swear, because it's kind of a bit of a nightmare to be getting this off of here sometimes. But anyway, um, yeah, so I'm just going to clean this off and make it perfectly flat. Okay, so now I have this piece of wood nice and flat on one side, nasty on the other. Just flip it over so the nice pretty flat side is on the surface and just put a bead 
of hot melt glue on the front and the back. Let that dry for a few minutes or a minute or two and then we will begin again with the router. Again, I have not adjusted the height so this router bit should not be touching this. Now I can go and measure what is the current thickness and how far am I from my desired thickness and I am quite a ways. So I'm going to be taking off in eighth inch increments until I get down to um, about one and three quarters. Well, I, I leave a little like a sixteenth thickness for sanding and stuff, but you know, pretty much one and three quarter inches. So if I'm not sure about the depth, so I did, you know, a couple one eighth inch, then I dropped it down to about a sixteenth inch, and I know I'm not going to use the corners, uh, certain corners of these. So what I do is I give it a test cut and measure out just on that test cut what the overall final depth is. Still got a ways to go. Perfect. So you might be asking, you know, why do you go and do it the hard way, manually, if he's got this nice CNC machine over here? A couple reasons. One, don't judge me. Two, I wanted to build the sled so that I can do this for you know multiple things really quick. It doesn't have to be guitar bodies. Uh, three, the wood was too thick to fit under here. Four, even though the router I have attached to that has a quarter inch uh, quarter inch collet whenever you buy it it's a joke you can't stick that in there any further than that that's ridiculous so if I have this sticking out on the end of that thing it's gonna be like eight inches of clearance I would need but with this beefy router it comes with a quarter inch and a half inch collet and it's a true quarter inch and half inch so that's what I'm doing the next step is to take this bit on the table and clean up these edges in between because each edge is as rough as the surfaces were. So I'm gonna zip through those, match them up and clamp them and glue them and uh, they should be ready to then put on the CNC machine to cut out the uh, 